In this video, we're going to be covering the wire EDM functions from inside of Bobcad Cam. Now, I already have the part drawn. It's all drawn there. I have start points in the center of all these holes. You can move those closer if you were drilling your holes in different locations. But to get started, all we have to do is right click on Cam Defaults, say New Job. Inside of here, we're going to choose Wire EDM. And then down at the bottom, we can choose which machine we're using. I'm going to go ahead and use this Sodic Mark 21 and then start my stock wizard. Now the stock wizard for this one is the exact same stock wizard we run into when we use the milling system. So the video that we saw earlier is also showing kind of the same stuff. So the workpiece would be a solid model that represents the final finished part. In this case, I don't have a solid model. I'm just using wireframe because all I'm doing is two axis work. So I'm just gonna hit next. And right here we have all of our stock choices. So we have rectangular, cylindrical, wireframe, solid, STL, or revolved. In this case, I'll go with just a rectangular piece of stock. We'll see that by default, it's nine and a half by five and a half, which is just reading the size of the part. And then the default thickness is always one. So I'm gonna say that this is a two inch depth piece there. Right here, we can then hit next. And right here on our origin, we could tell it where we want the origin to be. So I'm going to pick top dead center right where it's at. I don't need to change anything. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, after we have that done, it all depends on the machine. But if we expand the stock, we could see what material is chosen. And if we right click on that material, we can say edit. And inside of here, it'll let us choose what materials we have set up. Now, in this case, I do have a database of materials with different wire diameters. So all my feeds and speeds and EPAC settings will show up properly. Some of the machines do not have that. Some machines, you enter all that information at the machine. It all depends on your machine on whether this even shows up with different materials. In my case, I'll say we're doing tool steel and I'll use a 10 thou wire. So I'll hit OK. And so that's fine. If you don't have a database though, we can actually set up the EPAC settings, all the power settings when we're inside the features. So to get started with this, I'm gonna right click on machine setup one, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a two axis inside. We only have three options for two axis and three options for four axis. It's either an inside shape, an outside shape, or an open shape. But we have those same options for four axis as well. Inside shapes and outside shapes are always closed. Open shapes are open geometry. So there'd be like, if we just wanted to go in and cut out that end, we could do that. So I'm gonna go with a two axis inside and I'm gonna select my geometry. Now, if we set everything up right, what I'm telling Bobcad is that all these points that I have showing here are holes in the part already. So I'm actually gonna go and pick every piece of geometry all the way around. So all of these right here, as well as this rectangle that's right here. So I'm just gonna hold shift and pick it. Now, after we pick all the chains, we shouldn't have to mess with any directions, but you do have a quick option right here for your start point. So you could say, go to the start of the chain, go to the start of the longest entity or the middle of the longest entity. So I'm gonna tell it to go to the middle of the longest entity. And if we click in the profile chains, what we'll now see is the start points at the middle of the longest entity. And for a lot of this, it's arc, so it's just kind of the middle of the arc. When we're done, we can hit OK. Now from here, we'll hit Next. Inside this feature page, we have our stock thickness, so it's just telling us what the stock is. We have the upper and lower guide location, which depending on your machine may be important information, but some machines don't use this at all. Right here, we have our glue stop options. So this gives us the chance to stop at a certain point, leaving a tab holding the part in so either we can glue up the part or throw a magnet on it so that the part doesn't drop out after we finish cutting. So if we say with a glue stop with leads, we tell it the distance that we want the tab to be when we make our cut, and then we'd actually add a tab cut in. Now, if you turn this off and we say no glue stop, that tab cut that we currently see here is gonna disappear because there's no tab cut needed. So we're gonna do a glue stop on all this inside stuff and I'll leave it at 100 thousandths, that's fine. And right here we have our taper settings. So taper setting set to none means no taper is applied. 
If we tell it to just taper, we could tell it to taper a certain amount of degrees, whether we're doing it from the bottom or the top if we uncheck that. And then the direction, left or right, all you're doing is positive or negative numbers depending on which way you want it to taper. We also have a land and taper, which lets us set up a taper as well as a land. And then again, you can choose whether the land is on top or the land is on bottom. I'm going to go with none for all this. They're just straight through. So I'll go next. Right here for the machining strategy. I'm going to use the default, but that's just strategy number one. It's a rough cut, a tab cut, and some skim cuts. So we'll go next again. Right here we have our wire so it knows the diameter. We can enable starting cutting conditions or cutting conditions to use right on the start, as well as a rapid feed rate. For posting, we just have our arc spline tolerance, our work offset, and then how we're cutting. So do we do an individual shape, you know, finish an area, and then move on to the next, or do we go by operation? So do all of our roughing, all of our tab cuts, and then all of our skim passes. So I'm gonna go by individual shape here. Next, we have our machine sequencing, so we can organize which order we go in. So closest is gonna go from the first closest start point to the next. No sorting is going to go in actually the order you pick your geometry in, or if you drag a window over your geometry when you pick it, it's going to seem very random. X direction just follows the X direction. Y direction follows the Y direction. So I'm going to go with closest, starting at the upper left-hand corner and next. So this is where we start getting into the parameters. Now, because I left a glue stop, I don't have the option to do a coreless cut, which would be kind of like a pocketing routine for your wire. Instead, this is going to leave a big old slug that's going to fall out. Coreless would turn that entire slug into chips. So I'll go with a standard profile. Right here we have our system compensation, which means we'd be compensating the wire for you. And a lot of times that's going to stay off because we want to apply our G41 or G42 compensation to the part. Right here, if we have stop points, which are kind of resync stopping points for the job, we could just pick points somewhere on the geometry that tells it where to stop. We could apply those. We don't have any, so it doesn't really matter. For corner types, we could choose for external corners to do sharp, round. We can do a loop radius, a loop length. We could do a triangle or a bisected line. And we have all those same options when you're doing internal corners as well. Right here, we have our leads. So we do have a start hole, but the start hole for me really only comes into play if I'm doing a coreless cut. This is how I avoid cutting a lot of air. If I did drill a hole in the part already, I could tell it what the diameter of that hole is so we don't start right in the center. We start where the hole is cut to. Now we thread wire vertically. Now right here for the leads, we have circular. We have perpendicular blends. We have just perpendicular. We have parallel. And then we also have select point and point blend. So select point and point blend allow us to pick points that we're going to use. But I'm just going to go with the select point and let it go perpendicular to the closest. So all I have to do is say pick points. And what we'll see is right here, the only available geometry that can be picked by default is points. So I'm just going to drag a box over the whole part. And it's going to know that if this point is inside this shape, then this is the start point for that shape. So I'll just hit OK. And then we're going to lead out to the same point and then go next. Right here for the cutting conditions, we're just going to link it to our database so it figures all this stuff out. If you don't have a database, you're going to wait until you get down to the final cutting conditions page to set up your cutting conditions. So I'll show you that when we get there. Right here for the two axis tab cut, we could do a standard profile and we could tell it to flip the pass direction. This really depends on which direction it starts as, either clockwise or counterclockwise. We can flip it whichever way we want. We have our machine compensation and again, those stop points. For the leads here, we have perpendicular. So we could do a perpendicular lead in and lead out. Same as the lead out, same things. Next again, right here we have our cutting conditions. And finally, we have our skim passes. So if we want to do multiple skim passes, we don't use the machining strategy to add in multiple skims because the parameters page of the skim passes allows us to come in and tell it the number of skim passes. So we could say we want three skim passes. Now you could tell it to keep the skims moving in the same direction or reverse the skims. So they go back and forth. Again, compensation and stop points. 
We have the corner types, just like the rough cut. We have the leads. So on the leads here, I can actually go down and say select point, And again, just go and pick my points. So I'm just going to drag a box over all those, hit OK, and perpendicular to closest. Finally, we have our cutting conditions. Now, the reason I say wait till you get to the last page for your cutting conditions is because now that we've defined all the skim passes, when I go to my table, I have all three skim passes. If I go into it at any earlier point before I get to the skim passes, then I don't have all the skim passes. I only have, I don't have all the skim passes. I'd only have one. So I'm just going to hit OK and then compute. And we may need to change some of the tool paths on here, at least the leads for it. Because if we look right now, this rough pass lead is starting here. It's going to cut its way around. But on the lead out, it's going to come back this way. So there's really no point in this right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my rough pass. And I'm going to go to my leads page. And I just want to change the lead out. So I'm going to say, don't start in the same spot as the lead in. Go ahead and just do a perpendicular at 100 thousandths. So now I'll go ahead and hit compute again. And there we go. Now we'll lead in, we'll cut. And now this tab is actually holding on to some geometry. So there's our rough cut. There's our tab cut. And there is our skim passes. So they're using kind of the same geometry. Now we can go ahead and shrink that up because it's already blanked out. Again, that's a setting I have. If you go to settings and down to cam here, it's the auto blank new items. And now we'll do the outside cut. So we're going to right click on the machine setup and do a two axis outside. For the geometry, we'll select our geometry. I'm just going to hold shift, pick the whole shape, and then hit OK. From here, we'll go next. We have our feature page. So again, our guide locations. This one I'm not going to use a glue stop for. And there is no taper. So I'll just go next. Right here, we get our strategy. So we'll see this one because we didn't leave the glue stop. We only have a rough and a skim pass. So we'll do that next. Right here, we have our wire diameter. Next again, we have our posting. Next again, we have our machine sequencing. It's only the one part, so it doesn't really matter. And right here, we get to our parameters. So we have our system or machine compensation our corner types, our leads. And on this one, I'm going to do a perpendicular lead, but I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So I'll go uh, one inch and then go next. Right here, we have our cutting conditions once again. And then for the skim, I'll just say, let's do two skim passes, same compensation, corner types, no changes, leads, no real changes here. This part's probably not going to be able to be held anyway. I might need to do a glue stop just so I can hold the part in place. But right here, we have our final cutting conditions. So to make sure that the part does work, I'm actually going to go back up to the feature page. And I'm going to tell it that there is a glue stop with leads. But I'm not going to do the tab cut. I'm going to let the skim pass clean that up. So right there, I'll have my stop distance. I'll just do 100 thousandths. And then if we next our way through... We don't have to really change anything. It should stop early and then go to the skim pass. And then we'll have to do a little cutoff on the end. But we'll hit compute. And there is our rough cut. And you'll see right there is where it picked for the start point. I'm actually going to right click on the word geometry and say modify start point. I'm going to pick it for this edge right here and then hit OK. And then when I go and recompute, now we'll see it's going to start over here. And then there's our skim passes right there. So we are still going to be held onto the stock. We might need to do a tab cut, but for now that looks fine. So now we can go up and say start simulation and wait for the simulation to launch. Now in here by default, when you go to run this, if we go up to visibility, we can actually turn on the machine housing. And I'll say show on that. And that's just our guides for the wire. Makes it a little bit easier to kind of see what's going on, but you can hide them if you don't want to see them. And then we could say run. And so we're just going to start by cutting those out. Now remember, when we go through here, we would normally have holes in the middle of all of this. So we don't have to worry about all that. There's all the rest of these. Just going to let it finish all the internal stuff. Got two more after this. And then we're going to switch to the outside and make our cut all the way around. So there's the first rough pass. 
skim, and skim. And I could choose to reverse the skim passes if I wanted to. And then I could go and hide my machine housing. Now I still have to clean up that section there, but at least the part didn't fall out. And so now I can actually go to this remove chips. And what I'm gonna say is, again, only keep one part. I'm gonna hover over my model here and then use my middle mouse wheel to click on it. And anything that's not connected is going to disappear. So everything that disappeared would fall away and we would still be held on to this section here, or we would still have that section. So we need to figure out how we're gonna hold this part and mount it properly. And then when we're done, we can close out. And then the last step would be make sure you have your post processor in order. These posts are made for specific machines, but you may still need some minor modifications. And when we're done, we can either hit post up here or this big post button right here. Code's gonna show up in the posting tab right there. And from here, I can right click and either say save as and bring it right to the machine on a flash drive, or I could go into the NC editor, make changes to the code if needed, or send it to the machine via RS-232. And that's it. We're done with our wire EDM. So that concludes the video on the wire EDM tutorial in Bobcad Cam.